Hello, hello everyone. Hello Geographers. Welcome back to Everything Geography with me, Tapelo Tsolo. In this video, I'm covering what we call mid-latitude cyclones. And before we start, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Ensure that you have watched the previous video on reading and interpretation of uh, synoptic weather maps because this is the continuation of of the topic so without further wasting time let's dive into it so mid latitude cyclones as usual we start with key definitions that you need to know for you to understand this topic so what is a cyclone? As it reads there, we're talking about an area of low pressure which is associated with windy, windy weather conditions. And your front, or rather a front, it's a boundary separating two mass air masses of different temperatures and they have characteristics. We're also going to talk about the warm front which is um, um, an area found where warm air replaces a cold air whereas a cold front it's an area where cold air dominates the, the warm air and then we also talk about something in this topic which is pressure gradient which is basically the steepness between a high and a low, a low pressure cell so as we go along this topic, please bear those definitions in mind. So as you see here, this is what represents your warm front. And this is how we will see a cold front on a synoptic weather, weather map. So before we go anywhere, we need to revise what you learn in grade. 11 as mid latitude cyclones as a topic for grade 12. So you need to understand when you talk about pressure cells, we have two types of pressure cells. Number one, we have the high pressure cell, and number two, we have a low pressure cell. And this is how we represent or represent high pressure cell and this is how we represent a low pressure cell so there are a few characteristics that you need to understand when it comes to these pressure cells number one is that a high pressure cell will have an H um, written in the middle when you see it on the synoptic where I have whereas a low pressure whereas a low pressure will have an L written on it or in the middle of the of the cell. So in the southern hemisphere for high pressure cell your wings rotate in a south uh, in a uh, anti-clockwise direction. So in a, in as it says here anti-clockwise wind direct uh, rotation in southern hemisphere. So your high pressure cell, your wind will ro rotate in a in an anticlockwise um, direction, and then we talk about uh, pressure, which is experienced um, in these cells. So for a high pressure cell, the pressure will increase towards the the center. So you will have the highest pressure in the middle and as you go outwards the pressure will, will increase, will decrease rather, will decrease meaning from this isobar to there we'll have the lowest at the outside of the high pressure and then as you go inside your pressure will will increase and then we talk about a low pressure cell so in southern hemisphere the wind rotation 
the wind rotation will be clockwise direction as it says there there's a clockwise wind movement rotation in a southern hemisphere and when you talk about pressure your pressure decreases towards the center as it is as, as it re it's written over there you have 1000 and at the outside or rather in the the most outside also bar you have um 1006 so these are the two characteristics or rather high pressure cells characteristics that you need to understand about the two pressures high pressure cells and you need to know the difference key difference between the two especially uh, the low pressure cell one because mid latitude cyclones um, are associated with a, a low pressure cell. So just note that the pressure decreases towards the center. So at the outer side of the uh, isobar, you will have the highest pressure, but when you, as you go towards the center, you will have the lowest, the lowest pressure. And this is because of the air um, being lifted higher uh, from from this um, from this cell. We'll talk more about it as we move forward. One thing that is not noted here that you need to note um, or to be aware of is that the high pressure cell consists of or is dominated by normally cold winds, whereas the low pressure cell is dominated mostly by by warm winds. So moving forward, let's talk about mid latitude latitude cyclones. Mid latitude cyclones. What are they? So in definition, if you're asking an exam, and you would say these are low pressure weather system, uh, systems that occur at 30 degrees and 60 degrees north and south of the equator. So I've put here a, um, a, a weather map or rather a globe to indicate where these latitudes of these uh, cyclones move. So as you see here, you have your zero degrees and you have your 66.5 degrees, meaning your 30 degrees will be some from somewhere here up until here, meaning from 30 to 60 degrees, which will be up until somewhere here. So in this blue area right here, that's where you have your mid latitude cyclones traveling from. Um, as opposed to this side over here, which is the northern hemisphere, meaning in the northern hemisphere they will move start from here and move in this direction, whereas in the southern hemisphere they will move from this point over here into this direction, meaning these cyclones they move from west to east. So let's talk about the characteristics of these cyclones please bear in mind that other textbooks will use um, names like frontal depre depressions and temperate cyclones others they will use wave cyclones and also call them extra tropical cyclones you need to remember these words or these these terms because you won't know what the examiner might use so please note those different names used for mid latitude cyclones so these cyclones they consist of warm and cold fronts as we have indicated in the beginning of the slide or of this presentation that your cold your cold front will be represented um, by this whereas your 
warm front will be represented by this um, this uh, representation over here and as I said they travel from west to to east and another characteristics you need to notice that these are weather systems that occur all year round but in South Africa they dominate our weather in winter so they are responsible for winter rainfall in the Cape Town uh, which is the Mediterranean climate and these systems or, or these mid-latitude cyclones frontal depressions they normally occur in families and I have put this representation to indicate that um, you will find them in families so this will be family one this will be family two and family three so these are three families of mid-latitude cyclones please take note of this because the examiner might ask you how many families do you see here and you identify them by these cells over here or these low pressure cells over over here moving forward so we're now gonna cover the de developmental stage and related weather of um, mid-latitude cyclones meaning we're gonna cover how they occur conditions necessary for these mid-latitude cyclones um, to form so they occur in four different stages and we're going to discuss each stage um, in this in this lesson so the developmental stage and the related weather of mid-latitude cyclones number one we call it the initial stage we call it the initial stage and you need to know or be able to describe different stages uh, for the purposes of your examination so the first stage is the initial stage and the first bullet there I have is that you will have your warm moist tropical air which meets your dry air along the polar front so this is the typical um, representation of what happens um, uh, when this thing uh, when these mid-latitude cyclones begin you will have your cold air and warm air traveling in different directions and they will be um, they will be separated by what is called a polar a polar front because warmer air is less dense than cold air so the warm air will be forced to be above the the cold air so please note that there's no mixing of these air masses when they travel in different opposite directions or when they uh, when they travel in different directions and when you have two air masses traveling in opposite direction you will have what is known a, a pre, what is known as the the pressure gradient so the pressure uh, pressure develops in the polar front forming a, a pressure gradient meaning as these two air masses travel in different directions you will have what is known as the the pressure gradient as a result um, a wave forms due to disturbances uh, of winds in the atmosphere what happens is that as these two air masses travel in these different directions due to mountain ranges and also disturbances in the atmosphere uh, a wave will form meaning this wave will be a disturbance uh, will be a result of a disturbance due to the mountain ranges and it will destabilize these air movements meaning one air or rather one of the airs maybe a cold air will be forced to disturb 
store warm air because it's more denser as compared to uh, the warm air and this will form what we know or what we call uh, a low pressure cell so I've put a representation to try and demonstrate what happens here so as this polar front is disturbed you will have something like this um, whereby your now your cold wind which blow onto uh, the cold front meaning a cold front will now form and also a warm front will form due to now the air being disturbed to, uh, which is the cold air being disturbed to push forward whereas your warm air will be now um, forced to move south direction so this polar front is now bent due to the disturbance uh, uh, as a result of mountain belts so as a result you will have your low pressure forming and cold winds blowing into the cold front and warm winds blowing into the warm front so the second stage is what we call the mature stage now in this stage as represented here you will now have your cold air blown into into the cold front as it says that the cold air travel travels northwards and a cold front is now formed and when your cold front is formed you will have the warm sector because your warm front uh, will now have formed as well so your warm air will push towards the, the warm front whereas your cold air will push towards the the cold front please note that the cold front is a, an area or a front that is formed due to um, or which separates the two air masses so the cold air will be behind the cold front whereas your warm air will be up front of the of the cold front and this warm air is pushed south uh, southerly direction in the warm front develop as i as i mentioned and remember that these winds blow in a clockwise direction so the reason you have a cold front and a warm front is is this clockwise movement of airs of different air masses so your cold air pushing up and your warm air pushing downwards as a result you have your your low pressure and this happens in uh in south africa or rather in um in a southern hemisphere it is important to note also that this front will consist of sectors so you will have your warm sector which consists of your warm air and your cold sector which is behind um, the cold front which is the which is dominated by cold air so warm uh, cold sector warm sector please bear in mind and also take note of the pressure remember that pressure decreases from from the center of the system uh, outwards so it decreases so rather your your pressure increases as you go outwards but in as you go towards the center your pressure is decreased so this is what we call the mature stage of the uh, of the system and you need to be able to represent as you as you describe these stages you need to be able to different um, to draw these um, these representations or these diagrams so the third stage is what we call the occluded stage 
um, the occluded stage, you can refer it or you can imagine it as the conclusion uh, of the system, meaning we are going towards the conclusion of the of the of the system or of the cyclone. So this is the typical representation of what you will have at the occlusion stage. It says that the cold front overtakes the warmer front, meaning your cold air is now pushing to this cold front, uh, this cold front towards the warm sector. And as a result, the warm sector uh, is forced uh, to push the warm air outside of the system or rather in the northerly in the southerly direction so as a result of this your warm air is now remember the warm air is less dense than the cold air so as the cold air um, pushes the cold front your warm air is forced to to rise so as it says here the ground is now dominated by cold air meaning at the ground because of this pushing of cold air your warm air is now um, being forced to rise due to its dense and this process or the whole process of cold air pushing the warm air into the atmosphere we call it the occlusion and you will have what we know uh, what is known as the the occluded front so the occluded front will consist of these two representations so this whole stage we call it the occluded stage so this is where by now the cold air pushes warm air into the atmosphere in the occluded stage because of different um, densities of the of the air masses so the cold air is more denser than the warm air and forces the warm air into into the atmosphere and then you have the last stage which is which is the dissipating stage so when you talk about dissipating meaning it's it's toward uh, towards the the conclusion of the system or of the cycle meaning now it's becoming eradicated from the from the ground and as it says that the cold air has completely pushed the warm air upwards so i've put this 3d um, representation to try and show you what happens at the dissip uh, uh, dissipating stage of the system so you will have here the warm air pushing towards uh, the warm air or rather the warm air pushing the cold front towards the the warm the the warm front so in this here as it says here the stretches clouds ahead of the cold front um, due to the warm air now being pushed upwards in this in this representation over here this is now where the cold air has or rather the cold front has overtaken the warm the warm front and you have two MRCs mixing which gives you this occluded occluded front over here so this is this this, this is the typical example or the typical representation of how you will draw this dissipating stage remember um, the warm air is now fully uh, in the atmosphere or fully uh, rise to the atmosphere whereas your ground is dominated by by cold air so those are the four stages of how uh, mid latitude cyclones develop you need to be able to draw each and every stage and be able to describe what happens fully at each stage for exam purposes now we talk about um, the weather associated with mid-latitude cyclones also 
you need to be able to draw these stages or rather these um, representations of cold front and warm front so we're gonna start with cold front conditions remember when a cold front um, approaches um, in, in an area that you are staying at you start first by temperatures decreasing if you are standing here and um, the cold front is approaching remember these systems move from west to east so if you are standing if your name is X when you are standing over here as this front um, approaches you your temperatures will first decrease drastically and also the pressure will decrease but also increase with the cold sector so if you are here and you are experiencing these conditions meaning the pressure will steadily or will come steadily or will decrease dramatically and also we talk about the humidity which decreases so remember when you talk about the humidity we talk about the amount of uh, moisture in the atmosphere because cold fronts are associated with cold weather your humidity will, will decrease drastically and also the cloud cover increases now remember the cold air is now lifted into the atmosphere and as a result it causes um, a cloudy a cloudy weather meaning it will be accompanied by what we know or what is known as cumulonimbus clouds which carry uh, which carries um, um, heavy rain and you you will also experience stronger winds and which are which causes the flow in direction meaning if you're standing here you will experience more uh, more winds which are stronger but as you come towards or as this cyclone moves further and now you are in a cold sector you effectively experience um, sometimes heavy rains associated with a very cold cold weather so you need to imagine this when it happens in winter remember we have low we have a very low temperatures already so when a when these cold fronts approaches you have extremely cold weathers that is why in some areas they will experience snow so it is important to note um, or to be able to draw this weather system um, which is your cold front uh, and be able to represent or to uh, to describe what happens in each sector so you have the cold sector and you have your the warm sector over here and then we have what we call the warm front conditions so similar to what happens to um, the cold front uh, conditions when you're when you're standing here as an x remember they move from west to east your temperatures will increase we are now talking about the warm front conditions so in the warm front conditions when you're standing here you will you will experience first the increase in in temperatures due to the the warm sector of the front and your pressure um, as compared to the cold front would will decrease drastically and your humidity will increase remember your warm front is dominated by is dominated by um, warm warm air conditions or rather will be yeah, will be dominated by warm air so as a result humidity increase the amount of moisture in the atmosphere will increase so in an overall when a warm front uh, approaches an area you first experience increase in temperatures and decrease in pressure 
and your humility will, will increase. Be snobbed and be able to draw also um, the, the representation and be able to label it. So for all the representations or diagrams we have discussed, you need to be able to draw them and also be able to label them fully. So this is the typical um, cross-section of a mid-latitude cyclone. Um, when you're asked in the exam, you need to be able to, um, to fully draw or to represent this cross-section um, when you're asked to draw it and be able to label it. But most importantly, what you need to show is your cold front and show us the cold sector and also the type of clouds that are associated to show that this is a, a cold front. Remember, this is the cold sector which is uh, which carries it with it um, cold air. As it says, the cold heavier polar air sinks and undercuts the warm air, meaning this cold air pushes towards the the um, the warm sector so this here over here will have your warm sector which consists of warmer uh lighter tropical uh, uh which consists of warm lighter tropical air and this air is rise or is forced to rise due to the cold air so this sector which is the warm sector is dominated by by warm air and then over here you will have your warm front which ahead of the warm front um, is the the cold air so the air behind the warm front is colder than the warm air behind the warm front so the air behind the or rather ahead of the warm front is colder than the uh, air behind the warm front so as this system moves towards the right or from west to east you first represent uh you will first experience the colder sector of um of the warm front and then the warm sector and then the cold sector of the cold front please be aware of this um this cross section or this diagram and be able to draw it fully and also be able to label all the necessary labels of this diagram so in the next slide this is the satellite image i took from one of the textbooks um this is just a representation to try and show you sorry about that to try and show you how these systems look like in the satellite so as you can see from here this is your cold front remember the okay in family store so uh, this is the the clouds representing the cold front and over here you will have your low pressure and this represents your your warm front so this system is about to hit uh, southern africa and meaning this side you have your cold you know, your cold sector and in this side you'll have your warm your warm sector and ahead of the warm front you'll have your cold air meaning this will be cold air dominated and then warm air dominated meaning right now um, these areas over here, they are experiencing the warm sector. But as soon as this, as soon as this uh, cold front passes through, meaning already Cape Town is experiencing cold uh, conditions of this weather system. So as it as it moves from west to east, as it says, the movement of the cyclone soon um all south africa will represent or will feel 
I will experience the cold sector of um, of this cold front, which consists of very extre uh, uh, extreme uh, weather and heavy and heavy rains. So this concludes the topic on um, mid latitude cyclones. Please note that this is a brief, brief um, um, presentation of mid latitude cyclones. There may be some stuff that I didn't, I didn't cover, but it's a, a general summary of what happens um, with mid latitude cyclones. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section and I will attend to them. Other than that, please don't forget to subscribe and follow the channel. Also like the video and share it. Until next time.